Hey guys, this video is a follow-up video to a video I made a few months ago that was part of a class I gave in America last year about striking preemptively with no signal. Right? We spoke about not moving the shoulder, initiating the move from your fingers, and it's a balance between speed and relaxation. If you're moving too fast, if your focus is not moving too fast, you're going to jumpstart certain muscles and you're going to give a signal. If you just think about relaxation and you're just moving slow, obviously in his mind it's going to be registered as if it's two separate movements or a long movement. So you have to move fast, but you also want to be relaxed. You're not moving too fast. A very natural straight line. But a lot of people are asking me what about power? How are you generating power in that punch? And, or if, is it possible to generate power in that punch? So there are two answers to that question and both are very important to appreciate. Stand in front of me. First of all, even if there's zero power, if I could just get into his eye or anywhere in his face without him being able to register to see it coming, I don't need any power. Did you ever get a piece of dust in your, in your eye? It doesn't have to be powerful. As long as something is in your eye, you already can't function. So this, the main purpose of this type of strike is to create shot value. Imagine you're in your shower, you're singing, and then, you know, and suddenly somebody throws a punch right through the curtain and it hits you square in the face. Just the fact that you didn't expect it, you didn't see it coming, that alone has a tremendous psychological shock value on giving you the opportunity to hit the guy again harder. That's one answer to the question. Number two, we have a drill that I thought of that we could also maintain that advantage or test our are uh, striking with no signal and at the same time get a little bit of feel for how much power we can generate with a non-signal strike. So I'll give you the, sh the drill in two variations. First variation, I stand in front of my, my partner and I tell him I'm either going to punch you with my left hand to your right chest or with my right hand to your left chest. I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to try to trick you. If you see the strike coming here, you yield. You let the strike move you or try to move before. If I go here, you move that way. Now what's going to happen is if I move with the signal and he picks up on that signal, even if I hit him, right, then the, the power will be like uh, not so much because I caught him while he's already moving. But if I truly move with no signal, uh, like maybe hopefully you're going to see in a minute, then he won't have time to move. He may move, but that was already after he got hit and he'll feel the full uh, brunt of the, of the strike. So that's the first way I like to show the drill, okay? So I'll take a little step to here, right here, okay? So I'm going to either strike it to here or here, and you move, okay? You can do it even slow the first few times, just so you get a feeling of yielding, like we do a lot of times in the system of just getting the body used to the direction of the force that he should expect. Ready? So you could hear, you could ask him that he's feeling that strike. If that was a strike to the nose, to the jaw, or to the neck, or anywhere that strike would have gone, it would also do some damage aside from being tremendously surprising. Okay? And the power of that is simply if I'm really relaxed and I'm not using, I'm not tensing up any extra muscles around my shoulder, then there's a lot of dead weight that's being thrust forward. So you can change the drill if you, if you feel that's even too challenging for you, for him. Then you can tell your partner, you know what, I'm only going to strike you with my right hand to your left chest. I'm not going to even strike with the other hand. So there's no decision making as far as reading which hand is coming. You know that from the start. I'm going to hit you with this hand to this side. Which, by the way, important to realize that in the street, the guy doesn't or shouldn't know that you're going to hit him at all. Right? You're not showing the guy you're going to hit him, you're playing him, I don't want any trouble. And he definitely doesn't know which hand you're going to hit with and where you're going to hit to. Right? So you have a tremendous advantage in the street if you know how to behave and to talk and to try to calm the guy down and to hide your readiness to hit. But in this drill, we can make it even easier for him by telling him, I'm going to hit you right here. Right? And then we can still test to see power together with non telegraph And, right, there's a, ask him, there's power there. Not because I'm special or gifted, 
but just having the, the, the weight of the hand just traveling forward without tensing up the deltoid too much, right? If I tense up my deltoid, then my hand is being held up on its own by the muscle and then there's very little dead weight being thrust forward. But if I could relax and just drive from my tricep forward, then there's a lot more impact in that strike. So just to show you what, uh, two more times, I'm gonna hit you over here. I relax and I hit. Now I can show you, I'll do it wrong once or twice, I'm going to still punch you here, I'm going to do a slight signal. So when you see it, you move, okay? And there, I hit him, but it was already as he was moving and you felt much less uh, impact, right? One more time. Okay, there I almost didn't hit him at all because it was a signal and he read it and he picked up on it. Now I'll try to do it twice more. I'll try to do a no signal. So there you have it. If you do it right, it's going to work. If it doesn't work, it's because you're doing it wrong and there's a signal that somehow corrupts itself in to your movements. This is how the brain processes information. There is always a delay. Uh, the famous example that you can always use to illustrate this, the way the, pro the brain processes information is, you tell a guy to hold your fingers together, right? And you tell him, uh, no, don't grab it. When I let go of it, then you can grab it, okay? Don't hold, don't hold. And as far as I know, it's impossible for him to grab it unless he's lucky and he can move before I move and that's exactly when I let go. But if he's waiting to see when I drop it, then he goes to grab it, he's never going to make it because by the time his brain processes that information and sends out the, the message to go close his fingers, it's already gone. And the same thing is, the same concept is true here. When I go to move, if I move with no signal, by the time his brain processes that I move and gives the brain, the face of the hand, the command to move, it's already there. It's very simple psychology of how the brain works. The reason why it's hard to do is because of your emotion and your anger or ego in a fight and you're tense, you're more likely to trigger uh, certain muscles and then there's going to be a signal. But if you know how to control yourself and hide and really keep your body calm, please, and I'm in trouble, then you'll get in. You can even poke your guy's eye and you won't have time to blink. That's it for now. If you guys have any questions, leave your questions and comments downstairs in the comments and I'll try to address them at a later point.